This video will explore OpenAI's GPT-2 model. Their prior work on generative pre-training, GPT, showed the power of pre-training large transformer models with autoregressive predict the next token in the sequence, language modeling, and then fine-tuning these models by crafting new input representations for natural language processing tasks like semantic similarity, such as detecting duplicate questions on Quora. GPT-2 more than 10x is the parameter count of GPT and trains it on a much larger dataset scraped and filtered from Reddit. GPT-2 is able to generalize to language modeling on datasets it hasn't been trained on before, a setting described in machine learning research as zero-shot learning. GPT-2 is also able to perform zero-shot task transfer, such as question answering and translation without any supervised learning on these tasks, and this is done just by carefully prompting the input to the language modeling task. This video will explore GPT-2 and the details of these experiments presented in the paper. This video will explain the GPT-2 model. Described in the paper, language models are unsupervised multitask learners developed by research scientists at OpenAI. The original GPT model showed the effectiveness of pre-training these transformer decoder architectures on the language modeling task where you're iteratively predicting the next token in the sequence given some current context window. You then fine tune that representation from the pre-training language modeling task on these supervised learning tasks like text classification, natural language inference, semantic similarity, and multiple choice style question answering. GPT-2 builds on GPT by training larger transformers on a larger data set. Whereas GPT looks at the books corpus containing 7,000 books, GPT-2 looks at about 8 million web pages scraped and filtered from Reddit. GPT rearranges the input format for supervised fine tuning. This diagram shows how the input for something like Quora question pair similarity is taken into GPT. They have special start and delimiter tokens and the new like, kind of input format where you have text one and text two. And this is how the input format is structured for GPT. They have these special tokens, but GPT-2 is gonna look at how to present questions to language models in the same pre-training format as the uh, autoregressive language modeling task to perform downstream tasks. So just uh, asking it questions or just seeding it with translation by giving it an English sentence and then prompting it with French and then colon to have it translated into French and things like this. And this doesn't result in state-of-the-art accuracy on things like question answering, but the success that it does have, especially on translation, is pretty remarkable. One of the key characteristics of GPT-2 is that it's trained on a bigger data set. So the way that this data set is constructed is a huge contribution of this paper because these research scientists in natural language processing are looking to uh, curate these massive unlabeled text data sets. So the way that the OpenAI researchers do this is they go to Reddit and you have all these uh, different like trending posts that get upvoted to the top. So it has this kind of a natural filtering system already inherent in Reddit. And most of these are links to web pages. You see how it's uh, like the amount of food people waste globally, and then it's a link to a, an article. So what they do is they're filtering the uh, links based on how many upvotes they get. And then as a result of this, they get about 8 million web pages that amounts to 40 gigabytes of text data. And this data set is known as web text. This is a much bigger data set than the previous uh, books corpus data set. And also interestingly is even with the largest uh, models explored in GPT-2 with this 1.5 billion parameter transformer model, they still underfit to this web text data set. The next key idea in GPT-2 is that they're gonna be training bigger transformer models. So this is a small image of the original transformer architecture in the paper, attention is all you need. But all that I want you to take away from this diagram is that this is a transformer decoder. So they don't have this encoder plot, uh, part of the transformer, rather they're just taking this input sequence and just doing the transformer decoder. So what they're doing is they're gonna be stacking this transformer decoder block several times on top of itself to create the bigger models. So they are scaling up the number of times they're repeating the decoder block on top of each other. And then they're also gonna increase the dimension of the embedding with respect to when you do the self-attention and you project the query key value matrices, you have this parameter D sub model that is the dimension of those uh, matrix multiplications when you're doing the attention. The first interesting result they show is the results of zero shot domain transfer for language modeling when previously trained on web text and now evaluated on these other data sets like Lambada, which is this data set that's constructed for long range context modeling and then the children's book data sets and these other data sets that have previously been used to do this uh, like unlabeled text data for the language model pre-training. So when you have this web text data set and you're doing that language modeling task of predict the next token, slide the mask, predict the next token, slide the mask, you get this result when you just transfer it to an out of distribution data set. So it's not trained on any of these data sets, but it can still do the language modeling task, which is really remarkable. Additionally, what you see in this uh, chart is the improvement with respect to scaling up the parameters. So as we get into the main theme of GPT-2 is showing the results of scaling up these parameters. That's why we 
are now in the state where we have the 8.3 billion parameter model from Megatron, LM, NVIDIA, and now we have the 17 billion uh, Turing LGM, I think, is from Microsoft, because these results are increasing dramatically as you continue to scale up the model. And even at the end of the GPT-2 paper, they'd never uh, completely fit this web text data set, and the results of scaling it up never really saturate. The next idea presented in GPT-2 is zero-shot NLP tasks, but this, usually the term zero-shot refers to uh, generalizing from the, so it's more of like a training set distribution kind of uh, term that it describes. Zero-shot would usually be like train on CIFAR-10 and then evaluate on STL-10 or something like that. But in this case, zero-shot NLP task is describing that it's uh, doing tasks like reading comprehension, translation, summarization, question answering without doing any kind of training on the task. So it doesn't, it's not familiar with the task really. Rather what they do is they're just going to prompt it with these uh, different outputs that cause the language model to do these tasks. This is a result of GPT-2 question answering. You see that when you uh, prompt it with a question and then it's doing this language modeling task, it can generate these answers that are have high probability on this natural questions data set. The Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence have released a really great web demo of the 345 million parameter version of the GPT-2 model. So this is about one fifth of the final uh, size of the GPT-2 model. So you see how you can prompt it with these questions and then use language modeling to answer questions. So if you have who is the founder of the Ubuntu project, and then you give it uh, Mark, you can see how it does this predictions over what the next uh, word might be. So it has 6.8% uh, shuttle, 3.7% Zuckerberg, and then you know words that are definitely not the answer. And then you pick shuttle, and now you see worth with a higher accuracy. But yeah, so if you put it there, you get even higher uh, prediction of worth. So one interesting thing that I found when playing around with this is that if you uh, seed the GPT-2 model with like a paragraph in front of who is the founder of the Ubuntu project, like this, which I've just taken from Googling uh, what is Ubuntu, and then you see that you see that you get a different prediction. So now you have 24.4% shuttle and 2.9% Zuckerberg compared to I think 6.8 and 3.7. So you see how when you do this kind of uh, question answering with the language model, the more kind of context it has on like the left half of the decoder input, the better it's going to be at answering these questions. To further reinforce this idea and just make it more clear how GPT-2 might be answering these questions without being supervised to train on questions at all, you see how you have this input in the decoder. So the transform decoder is just this right half of the transformer. You don't have this uh, input encoding. Rather, it just is taking the input and then it's masking over the certain half and then it's predicting the uh, next mass token in the sequence. So you see if you, if you add like that paragraph on what is Ubuntu into the input sequence, it has more context for this self-attention to go about you know, answering Mark Shuttleworth compared to Mark Zuckerberg as the founder of Ubuntu. Another remarkable example of this is doing translation with the GPT-2 model. You see how it takes in this uh, English sentence and then you just give it French colon and then the GPT-2 model will start uh, translating it into French. And similar with uh, fr uh, French and then English, it's a really remarkable thing. And so they have to have this kind of data in the web text training set. So that's kind of one of the interesting things about what GPT-2 is able to do is a result of this massive web text, 8 million web pages data set. At the time of publishing this video on GPT-2, Microsoft's new 17 billion parameter Turing NLG model is the headline of AI news. So the result of this is by scaling up GPT-2 even further from 1.5 billion to 17 billion. And you see the performance increases on the zero shot uh, language modeling task on these Lambada and Wikitext 103 data sets with respect to scaling up the GPT-2 model even further to 17 billion parameters. So you see this plot presented in the GPT-2 paper that it doesn't look like the perplexity is saturating as you scale up the model. It looks like if you imagine extrapolating this curve that it would continue to go down as you get uh, larger language models. As a quick note on the NVIDIA Megatron LM and the Microsoft Turing NLG models, what they're doing to scale up these models is looking at data and model parallelism. So basically this research like the deep speed and the zero optimizer from the recent Microsoft paper is it looking at how to distribute the data and the model across like tons of GPUs. I think it's something like 1,024 GPUs that they use in the Microsoft paper to train that Turing NLG model. One of the news headlines around OpenAI's GPT-2 paper was their staged release where they didn't want to instantly release the 1.5 billion parameter model and instead they first released the 345 million parameter and then I think something like a 700 million parameter model and warned about the dangers of these kinds of language models. The AI community mostly reacted to that with kind of a mix of like thinking it was funny that they sort of thought so highly of their language model, but it's kind of interesting to think about, you know, the dangers of these kind of language models. I came across this post on Reddit using GPT-2 and BERT to do Reddit replies, and you know, the result, the success of this is pretty astonishing. So what they do is they use the GPT-2 model to generate potential Reddit comments, 
and then they use the Google BERT model to fine tune them based on realisticness and then select them based on an upvote predictor. So you see from this blog post on combining GPT-2 and BERT to make a fake person on Reddit, the success of this. So some of the examples of what this uh, does in response is it has these highly common, uh, opinionated responses like Dune's fandom is overgrown, underfunded, and in many ways a poor fit for the new faster internet ger generation. Doing this kind of a, you know, like a provocative response that the BERT upvote model has probably predicted. And then also really remarkable is it takes this input of like a list of things and it responds with, starting with like two, I've had a few people tell me. So it's really remarkable what this is able to do. And that kind of discussion around the misuse of this is definitely, you know, worth having and looking at. Thanks for watching this video on the GPG-2 model from OpenAI. This research shows the power of enormous transformer language models trained on enormous data sets. Their experiments show that training on web text generalizes really well to language modeling on data sets it has never been trained on before, such as the children's book data set and wiki text. They also show how GPT-2 can be prompted to perform tasks like question answering and translation after only being tasked, uh, trained with the language modeling task. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.